morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the chat room of I Am Japonica. My name is Japonica Brown from Japonica Brown Consulting Firm. Come on into the chat room of I Am Japonica. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Listen, do me a favor, I need you to write your name on the screen. Good morning. What that mean? What them eyes mean? Do I look weird today? I did something new with my hair. <laughs> good morning. Listen, write your name on the screen so I can greet you. Good morning. Good morning. It is Friday. Let's see what time it is. Come on, radio. At 9.37. 9.37. I made it. I made it. I survived. We got to get these times together. Hey, I've been working. I've been up. I've been working. I have been working, working, working. Um, I'm still at Mississippi State University working with the young people and um, had to do my invoice today. Good morning. And talk to the, the, the big guy in charge because she had to get paid. Okay, then. All right. Praise God. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Write your name on the screen so I can greet you. Oh, fancy stuff. Yes, ma'am. So if I'm running late, it's for a good reason, y'all. I promise you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the chat room of I am Japonica. My name is Japonica Brown from Japonica Brown Consulting Firm. Let's see if we can get a little theme music in here. We got some music. Mm, let's see. Let's see what we got in the radio. Okay, we can rock with that. I forgot it was in the radio. Okay. So, how's everybody doing? I hope everybody's doing very well. Um... I am just, we'll wait, it's worth it, amen. I hope so, I hope so, please wait. I'm trying, I, hey, I've been thinking about y'all nonstop. I'm like, okay, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. So, but when a man called and said, hey, we got your check ready, <laughs> we just need your invoice, she pulled out that laptop too quick. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> Periscope just going out the way. <laughs> I'm just messing with her. She knows me. All right. So let's talk. Good morning, Tara. Let's talk, shall we? Um, I, yesterday went really well. I don't know if you guys were able to see uh, the periscope of me doing the, the poetry workshop, but I can only say that God absolutely moved into place. What you guys did not see was there was a portion of the afternoon where the spirit of God took over and we weren't even supposed to talk about God. We didn't even, I, I didn't even mention God as far as his name itself in the professional world. You do have to be careful about that. But what I did do was just allow God to be uh, used to use me and to use me in a free way. And these children started to weep and started to cry and I had to uh, counselors there were counselors in the room and I had to make small groups make small groups so the counselors can go and talk to them and minister to them in small groups and then I asked God I'm sitting there and I'm watching them go through their moment and they're crying and they're trying to express themselves about the things that they were going through I mean these are children that have gone through a lot of things and they've been holding a lot of stuff in and they've built these defense mechanisms trying to keep it all together and I gave them the opportunity to take off their mask in fact I required it I, re I required it take off your mask I get it. You got a mask on. We all wear a mask to survive. But in this space, I'm telling you, it's safe to just be. You don't have to be anything in particular for anybody. You can just be in the moment and be yourself and take a deep breath and live in that moment of who you are. And not be afraid of rejection. Because no one's rejecting you. If we're all just being ourselves. No one is rejecting who you truly are. We all are being who we truly are. And they just started to weep. Nobody had ever given them permission to just be. Nobody had ever told them it was safe enough to just be. That no one had ever told them that I'm not going to hurt you if you just be. I'm not going to talk about you if you just be. And they just breathed for the first time ever. And things started to happen. And I sat there and I was praying and I said, okay, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? Because this is happening now. All this is coming out. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? Because we were supposed to create a piece. They were supposed to write their poems. After I talked to them how to make poems, they were supposed to write them. And I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? He says, tell them to write four sentences. Just four. Write four words. Just four sentences or four words. I didn't care what it was. I wasn't going to judge it. I didn't care about the grammatical errors or the, the syntax. I didn't care. Just write four words. And they just started... They wrote 
as they were crying and talking about being burned by parents and being neglected and being raped and molested by fathers. They just started to write as they talked about having to fight their moms and, and protect their sisters from their mama's boyfriends. And they just began to write when they talked about being homeless and sleeping on park benches and have to fight folks from taking advantage of them. When they talked about drug abuse, it just they just started to write and talk and write and talk. And you saw them just... And these same ones that had this persona and this this girth and this aggression, they started to melt. And then you saw these children. You saw these little girls and little boys. Because that's what they really were. They were children. And then I said, okay, let me hear yours. Okay, let me hear yours. Okay, let me hear this. I'm going to give you a number. One, two, three, four, five. And I just started taking people and standing them in a line. One, two, three, four, five. And I said, now read yours, read yours, read yours, read yours, read yours. And before you know it, we have a collected piece. And at the end, one boy says, broken, uneasy, misunderstood, victory. I said, you are telling the story of the audience. You're giving us an opportunity to live through you. You're giving us an opportunity to take a deep breath because though we don't have the same story, we may have similar stories. I may not have to run for my life, but I may have to run for my life. You don't understand that we are all connected. Nothing separates us, but what we think separates us. And we're so, we're so alike, it's scary. And the more they performed it, the more confident they got. And the more they stood up and the more they rolled their shoulders back and the more their voice projected. And I looked around and every counselor was crying. Because I did not know that these same children had been going through and misbehaving and, and having defiant attitudes all weekend. These are the same kids that they had been working with. These are the same kids that had been stressing them out. And I looked over and the co-creator was crying. And she said, my God. I poured everything I had out in that room. I took my shoes off and sweating. My hair was so I would pour it everything because I needed to be used by God. I wanted him to use me. I said, you can have your way, God. It's not about the money. It's about the ministry. And those same girls that had that resolve and that aggression came up to me afterwards and hugged me. And they said, thank you. And the boys, they hugged. They said, thank you. And I got ready to leave and I had my stuff and I got ready to leave and the co-creator of the entire thing she called me over she says let me give you a hug and I said okay sure put my stuff down and I gave her a hug and I patted she says no she says you poured everything you had out you've been with these kids for six hours you poured everything you had out let me pour back into you she said don't pat me let me hold you and she grabbed me and she hugged me and for a moment, I was still holding on to my resolve. And I just said, I took a deep breath. And I felt strength coming back to me. And I didn't realize how tired I was. I didn't realize I had been just going, 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 going all week. And I just, it's done. It's finished. I did what you told me to do. I was obedient. <sighs> and when I left, I went back to the dorm that they had me staying in. I took a shower. And I talked to my sister in Christ. I said, I'm tired. I said, I'm tired. So I've never felt so tired before. She said, you've been giving, giving, giving. I said, I think I'm just going to lay down. And I slept from 6 to 1 o'clock in the morning. Got up, looked around, and went back to sleep. Because it was done. I am so immensely proud of those children. Of those teenagers, of those young women who, of those young men who were brave enough to take off their mask and be. And not judge where they are, but just be. My question to you is, do you ever give yourself an opportunity to be? Where you don't have to perform for anybody or you're not worried about who's looking at you or who's expecting something from you or who's needing something from you. You can just be.
Do you ever give your time, yourself time and space after ministering or after being mommy or after being wife or after being the worker at the job or after being whoever at the church, after being whatever you are to whoever you are to? Do you ever just take a moment from the world and take off all your mask, all the mommy mask, all the pastor mask, all the preacher, and just take them off and just be you where you are at that place, weak, strong, broken, whole, wherever, and take a breath and let him breathe life into you and not judge where you are, but understand this is where I am and I'm okay with it. This is who I am. And I'm okay with it. And I'm not judging me. I'm not judging me by the constraints or the, the, the sentiments of the world and society. I'm just me. And I'm okay with me. And even if you're not okay with you, giving yourself time to take a breath in that uncomfortableness. Because that's where your life is. That's where healing is. That's where, that's where your growth is. It, it's not in the pretending. But it's in the bravery of being authentic. We live in a world full of superficiality and people are thirsty and don't even know they're thirsting because they're exhausted from performing, performing for your social media, performing for your friends, performing from performing for your family, performing for your children, performing for your husband. Everybody's got something that they need from you and you're constantly giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. And I'm telling you to take a moment it's in the bathtub or the shower. Take a moment in your car or in your bedroom. Take a moment in your closet or in the kitchen. Take a moment and just be. Be in that space. Be in that calm, uncomfortable, vulnerable, scary space of who you authentically are. Don't abandon that person. Don't neglect that person because you're afraid of what's in there. Don't compartmentalize your pain and forget that they're in those boxes because you can never heal until you start unpacking. You can never heal until you start unpacking. How do I unpack? By talking about it. Who do I talk to? If you don't want to talk to anybody, talk to yourself. Talk to God, write it, record it. I don't care what you do, but get it out. Get it out. Get it out so you can breathe. Because in life, we pick up things, we go through things, and we, we grab things. And this is this is my my last broken relationship. And maybe this is my disappointment from my family. And maybe this is a miscarriage I never talk about. Okay. And and this is something else. And this is and this is something else. And you are overwhelmed with stuff. And you all trying to keep a smile on your face and you bless the Lord and oh hallelujah and God is good and girl I'm turning hey, amen bro I got it together and you so heavy you so heavy you can't even take a deep breath you so heavy so this is what I need you to do start start unpacking slowly start Start unpacking stuff. And then one day, as you're unpacking, whew, you're gonna feel so you're gonna feel so light. You're gonna you're gonna feel so new and you're gonna feel so restored and you're gonna feel so whole and you're gonna feel so filled and for the first time in a long time you're gonna be able to breathe. You're going to be able to breathe. I had counselors, college students that were volunteers come up to me saying, I, I want to take your class. I would love to be in your class. We need this here at Mississippi State. We need your class. I just smiled. And the whole time I was teaching yesterday, I was battling my own thing. I hadn't heard anything from the, the job interview. I had, and I said, Lord, I prayed for a perfect employment. I spoke a word of perfect employment. I believed perfect employment was coming. And, I, and Lord, I know you didn't bring me all the way here to turn your back on me now. I know that I've come too far to go back. I said, God, so I don't know what you're doing. 
I don't know what's tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen the next day. All I know is God, I claim and decreed and declare for perfect employment. The perfect job where fun and creativity exist in the atmosphere. And that my, my skill sets would make me equipped to handle the job. And that I'd be richly compensated for my skills that I've provided. So I don't know what you're doing. But God, I cannot and will not worry about it anymore. I'm making a choice to cast all my cares upon you. I'm not going to stress about it no more. I put my phone down. I said, I'm not going to look at that phone. Because right now, it's not about that. It's about them. I said, Lord, have your way. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't know where the perfect employment is coming from, but I know that I trust God and that's all I can do. I can, that's all I, that's, that's my biggest and my best option is to trust God. And I'm telling you that's your biggest and your best option is to trust God when it didn't, when it don't look like it, it's going the way you thought it was going to go. Just your best option and your, your b biggest option is to trust God in everything that you're doing, God. And so we need to take your, I would take your class. The co-creator, one of the co-creators came to me and she says, I'm on the board for conferences in the state of Mississippi. She says, I will be calling you. I said, praise God. She said, is this your cell phone number? I said, that's my cell phone number right here. That's my number. You call that number, you're going to get me. She says, I'm going to be calling you. I said, praise God. What I didn't know is another volunteer was in there was an older gentleman. He was a pastor. He says, I could preach. Everything you just did with these kids, I could preach it. He's like, it's grown people that need to hear this stuff. I said, praise the Lord. He says, do you have a card? I said, yes, sir. Give him my card. What am I trying to tell you? That sometimes we have an idea of where God is taking us. And we have no idea of where God is taking us. And the best decision that you can make is to trust him with everything that you have. Trust him in all Everything that's going on in your life, trust him. And I trusted him. And I'm trusting him. I'm trusting him so. I didn't talk to that lady about the money. I didn't even worry about the money. But what did happen? The creator of the program came to me today. He says, I have your check. They were supposed to pay me two weeks from now you send an invoices and you pay them two weeks from now they said that's what consultants do i said i'm not i am a motivational speaker this is what i do i said i'm gonna give you everything i got i said and then i need the money that day I, i'm gonna give you everything i got he says this is a good check it was a personal from his personal account his him and his wife name on it he says you can cash this right now you'll get your money i said yes sir he says did you send your invoice to me i said i sure did Yesterday, I told you that I didn't know if I was going to get paid. Today, I got the money in my pocket. Praise God. Whew, thank you, Jesus, for favor of God. Thank you, Lord God. But your word says, God, that you would give us favor with men. If you don't believe me, go watch the Periscope from yesterday. I told y'all. I said, I, didn't, I wasn't going to get paid. But I said, I wasn't going to worry about the money because I was doing it unto God. And I got the check in my hand today. My uncle said I can't do no periscope without crying because I'm I'm grateful. You understand what I'm saying? I'm grateful. I didn't act a fool. I didn't I didn't act no craziness with them people. I went in there with the professionalism and the integrity that I was taught from my family. And I did my best. I poured everything I had out for those children. God gave me favor because his word says that we'll have favor with God and with man and I believed him and I trust him I believe him and I trust him with everything I got everything I am I believe him and I trust him I believe him and I trust him more than I believe and trust myself and I'm telling you this to encourage you because you never know. You never know what God has in store for you. They didn't do that for anybody else. Hear me. There were two other people here doing culinary arts and visual art. And I got my money today. God is faithful. 
He's miraculous. He's glorious. He's wonderful. He's amazing. He's awesome. He's all knowing. He's a provider. He's a healer. He's a comforter. My God, my Father, He knows the things that I have need of, and He will never see His Son begging for bread. So, before I cry any more of this makeup off, <laughs> I got to go get ready because my students, all 18 of them, all 17 of them, will be performing an original piece that we created yesterday. And I'm going to periscope it. I told them, I have a story. And somebody needs to hear it. And they repeat it after me the whole day. I have a story. And somebody needs to hear it the whole day. I have a story. Somebody needs to hear it by the end of the day. I said, I have a story. And they said, I have a story. And somebody needs to hear it. Somebody needs to hear it. But then let's hear it then. Then let's hear it. Because we're listening. And you got our attention. You got our attention. So, be on standby from Periscope as we watch those amazing, amazing students perform. It's going to start in actually a couple of minutes. I got to go over to the building and I will see you guys momentarily. Thank you so much for tuning into the chat room of I Am Japonica. My name is Japonica Brown from Japonica Brown Consulting Firm. If ever you're in the need of a workshop facilitator or a conference speaker, don't hesitate to call me at Japonica Brown. I'm sorry, not call me, email me at Japonica Brown Consulting Firm at Outlook.com. And, uh, or you can go to my website, www www.iamjaponica.com www.iamjaponica.com It's been amazing, amazing, amazing and I'm just so excited what God is doing because I'm still going to dream. I'm still going to dream. I'm still going to have faith and I know he's going to do awesome things. Maybe not in the way that I expected but definitely in an amazing way. I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you and I'm praying for you. I pray for you every day. Continue to pray my strength, my restoration, as I'm going to be back on the road today, going back to Alabama. Pray my safety on the road, and uh, I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow. Here's the deal. I'm going to always periscope you between 8 o'clock and 9.30. I'm going to be in that area, 8 o'clock, 9.30, in that area. That's giving me some wiggle room. You never know what might happen. Hair hey, emergency or something, 8 o'clock to 9.30. Just be expecting 8 o'clock to 9.30. Sometimes it's a little bit earlier, depending on where I got to go, but 8 o'clock to 9.30. Deal? Deal. I might buy you something to eat. I hope so, because I'm hungry now. I ain't ate breakfast. <laughs> I ain't ate breakfast, so I sure got to eat me something. But I'm going to eat after my babies perform. Uh, people going to think I'm crazy in this car. Who cares? You know how many people been walking around and I'm talking? They don't even know I'm talking to a camera. <laughs> they think I'm talking to myself. And I might be. <laughs> all right y'all i love y'all let me go let me go find this building all right bye